Um, can I just start, uh, Trudy, by saying an enormous thank you to, to you. I don't get a chance to say thank you to you very often, um, particularly in front of um, so many people. So um, I do want to say an enormous thank you to you. Um, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And uh, I, I know that you've emerged from this year a stronger, <laughs> a stronger person. But, but also, I'd just like to say an enormous thank you to, to you um, for, uh, for coming along this morning, but also for all of the work that we've been able to do together in, in my first year as the regional minister. Now, we, we call today's speech one year on, uh, very much in the hope that you will forgive the impertinence of making a one year on speech uh, 10 months into the job. Uh, I think, as I said last year, uh, we have no time to lose uh, in this region, hence a one year on speech 10 months into the year. Now, when I spoke last year, I said that this region faced enormous challenges in skills and science, in transport and trade, and in turning around our region's reputation. And I said that if we as a region mastered these challenges, then it would be possible for us to create new wealth. And with that new wealth, it would be possible to create different kinds of communities, communities that were both richer and fairer, and which offered a different kind of set of opportunities uh, to people in this region, the people that we have come into public life to serve. But above all, I said that this region faced a choice, a choice about whether to break with the habits of the past, a choice about whether to break with what I called last year the malaise of modesty, the choice about whether to set a new course a new boldness and a higher horizon for people in this region. And last December, we turned this, as a region, into a set of numbers. Thanks in particular to Nick Paul and his team for the work they did on that regional economic strategy. But we said that if we wanted to be better than average, we would have to get 44,000 people extra into work. We would need to start 1,900 new businesses each and every year we'd have to get 110,000 people extra into training. We'd need to get 75,000 people up to the level of five good GCSEs. We'd need 70,000 new graduate jobs. We'd need to spend 420 million pounds extra on R&D. And we would need to do all of that while bringing down, cutting our carbon emissions by 23 million tons by 2050. It's a big ask, but my message 12 months on, unequivocally, is that we're up for it. So what I want to say to you today is that I think business and public service leaders in this region have indeed made the choice that I asked them to confront last year. They have indeed decided that this region can and will be richer and fairer in the years to come. They have, in other words, bought into a course of action that is more ambitious which is more aspirational and offers a different kind of hope and a different kind of change to people in this region. Let me lay out for you my evidence for this assertion. On transport, we have put plans in place and wins in the bank. We have the region's first ever consensus on major projects and nearly half a billion pounds in the bank to fund a new New Street station, just as I promised. On trade, again, plans in place and wins in the bank. I went to both India and China, as I promised. We are soon to publish the region's first India action plan. And with Tata's takeover of Jaguar Land Rover, we see falling into place the most significant bridge to date between us and that great growth market of the future. On skills, we have published our first ever skills action plan, the first English region to do so. And my thanks to the leadership of David Craig and colleagues at AWM for making that happen. We are now assembling a powerful alliance to drive that plan through the government, the CBI, the EEF, and the Chambers of Commerce. But with that plan comes a win in the bank, confirmation that the West Midlands now has the UK's best performing apprenticeship programme, the best performing train to gain service in the country. By some distance, we have 
the largest number of businesses anywhere in the UK signed up to the skills challenge, and 60% of public service employers in the region covering 100,000 employees have signed up to my skills pledge challenge of last year. On science, I said that we could achieve more if we brought together the National Health Service and our universities. And our strategic health authority, under the leadership of Cynthia, who I think is here, has showed us exactly how that can be done, with blueprints for how three such partnerships can be put in place here in the West Midlands. And on the back of that announcement, hot on its heels, came news that University Hospital of Birmingham and the University of Birmingham have won a huge £14.5 million government boost to their Birmingham Clinical Research Academy to back academics and clinicians researching help for how we turn new ideas into practical difference for the people of this region, helping put us on the forefront of research nationally. And my congratulations to both Sir Albert Bohr and Julie Moore for their success in that regard. On reputation, I said that a push behind digital media was the key to combining our heritage and our future. This year, we won Channel 4's decision to base a £50 million digital media commissioning fund here in Birmingham, a very special coup that positions our region as the UK lead in digital media production. So across every single part of the agenda that I set out last year on skills and science and transport and trade and on our reputation, we have not only put plans in place, we have put wins in the bank. But long term, I said that we would be judged on whether we had hit our numbers. And I was quite candid in what I said about my own powers and my own limited abilities to influence this. I said I merely had the power to challenge and to convene and to communicate. I said it was for government to secure agreement from regional partners and regional leaders about the right kind of deal and the right kind of agenda to shape and bend the way we spend £120 billion of public money in this region over the next five years. That is a very large cheque and it is a very big responsibility. So for six months, the Government Office of the West Midlands in a team led by Philippa Holland, who I congratulate this morning, has been negotiating hard with local partners. And this morning, I can announce the headline results. 